All righty, welcome everyone to the National Catholic College Admission Association College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer your questions. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use that Q&A button on your screen to type questions at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash nccaa. And now I'd like to turn it over to Mount Mercy University. Hello everyone, my name is Sabrina Taps fee I am with Mount Mercy University, which is located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And just to give some insight to where that's actually located, we are about three and a half hours straight west of Chicago. Uh, but lots to offer at Mount Mercy. Just to give some insight here, I'll share my screen with you. And share some, some uh, some fun tidbits here. So with Mount Mercy University, as I mentioned, we're located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We are roughly, oh goodness, now it's not gonna go. There we go, sorry about that. Technology on a Sunday is not working for me. But anyways, so we are uh, almost 100 years old. We've been around since 1928. We are a Mercy institution, which means we are founded by the Sisters of Mercy. Uh, it, part of the Catholic uh, foundation there. Our main points really are striving to encourage our students to inspire lives through knowledge, service, and opportunity. We have about 1,500 students on our campus that come from the state of Iowa, the US, but also from around the world. So it's really exciting to see all of our students interact with each other throughout their time on campus. With about 1,500 students total, about 1,000 of those are undergraduate students. So the nice thing about our small private college education is that your class sizes are fairly small, usually about 20 to 25 students in each one of them, which allows for a lot of interaction with the professors, a lot of opportunities to then engage with those professors and for them to get to know you. Because in all honesty, those professors, when it comes time to find that job or apply for a grad or professional programs later on, they're the ones that you're gonna to wanna to be talking to in order to get those letters of recommendation or references. Uh, they're great resources because they've had you in class. Uh, they get to know you inside and outside the classroom. Um, as you can see there on the slide, our student to faculty ratio is about 15 to one. So like I said, you get to know them fairly well. Uh, a lot of our faculty are advisors. So they are the ones in the classrooms helping you understand what you need to know moving through your education. A lot of them have been in the field before becoming a professor. So nice thing too, especially with our business program, a lot of experience in the field. We have some that still work in different marketing firms around town, uh, which really help our students engage with the business community outside the classroom. Lots of great opportunities. And of course, with the liberal arts core curriculum, it's not focused solely on what your intended major is, because as we know in the college profession, not everyone sticks with that same major and that's okay that they, that they chose to come in with or they come as an, in, as an undeclared or an undecided student and that's okay. Part of that liberal arts core curriculum is to help you find what sparks your interest. What might you not know about when you're in high school and figure out this is really something that interests me. That core curriculum allows you to explore that a little bit more and add to those initial interests that you come in with. And as with any educational experience, there's a lot of it that comes outside of the classroom, whether it's internships, whether it's job shadowing, study abroad, service learning is huge on our campus. A lot of our students get involved in that. Whatever it is, it all comes together to create that college experience, it really helps you focus on the educational aspect. With everything we have to offer, the core areas that we are known for are the nursing program here on campus, our education program, and our business programs. Those are the ones that people tend to come to us saying, this is what I'm interested in, and I know you have it. But we have 45 different academic programs for students to take part in. And again, it all comes down to what sparks your interest. A lot of those students come in saying, this is what I wanna do. 
They might take an additional class. And like I said before, all of a sudden, hey, you know what? I really want to explore this area as well. So I have students that I know at Mount Mercy who are nurses who are also involved in some of our art classes, um, who are also engaged in some of the business classes because they kind of enjoyed the opportunity to explore the healthcare administration side of it as well. So there's lots of ways for you to really create that education you're looking for. There's also opportunities for students as undergrad to start some of the graduate level programs that we offer on campus. There's also opportunities within some of our business programs that if students are really focused, they can get their degree in three years. And so there are ways that you can really get the most out of your educational time while they're here on campus. Of course, with any opportunities on campus, it all comes together. It's a package deal. It's the educational aspects or the academic component. It's the residential component that we have available. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's also the student life aspect as well. When it comes to the residence halls on campus, we have five different uh, residence hall opportunities. For our first year students, they tend to focus more in two different residence halls, which are more your traditional aspects. They're going to have your room with your beds, your dressers, your desks, um, and then there'll be a community bathroom down the hall. Uh, for our upper class students, there are some more communal living type opportunities where they are bigger apartment styles. We also have some um, houses on campus that some of our upper class students can choose to live in where they truly get that housing experience where they're cooking their own meals. They are uh, making sure the garbage gets taken out because housekeeping doesn't come in and take care of those like they do with some of the traditional residence halls. Uh, but free laundry, free parking, uh, Wi-Fi, of course, in all of our spaces, uh, cable and printing as well. Uh, because we know that not everybody wants to bring around their own printer. And you know what? You can do it right here on campus and not have to worry about paying for a thing. Um, dining opportunities on campus as well. Food's always important. And I will say that I have always been impressed with the variety of food options that we have here on our campus. Uh, but lots of opportunities as well. Athletics and fine arts are all big for students. So we encourage if they have any interest in those to pursue that as well. There are scholarship opportunities available for both athletics and for the fine arts, uh, which I see the athletic options right here, some of the facilities, but then also the fine arts right here. So we definitely encourage if you are interested in any of these areas, let us know. Uh, we wanna make sure that if you qualify for any of those scholarships, we can also get those added to your financial aid package. Uh, but I know I went through things fairly quickly here, but always here for questions and we look forward to hearing from you all later. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, next up we have Salve Regina University. Hello, thank you. My name is Nick Albanese with Salve Regina University, located on the cliffs of the Atlantic Ocean in beautiful Newport, Rhode Island. At Salve, we say that you will learn, lead, and make a difference. Um, so in terms of making that difference, we're founded by the Sisters of Mercy. Um, and so similar to uh, the, the previous speaker you just heard, um, we're part of that international organization um, of mercy institutions and, and mercy-affiliated uh, places. Sisters gave us our mission statement and um, one of my favorite parts about it is that last line, we work for a world that is harmonious, just, and merciful. So we really believe in turning the empathy that our students have and the leadership skills that they develop into action. The sisters also believe that it's important for our students to know about some of the, the um, most troubling topics in society and, and kind of feel like they're able to do something about those things. Um, and so uh, some of those areas are environmental justice and taking care of the planet, um, immigration reform, nonviolence as a baseline for behavior, anti-racism and promoting women's rights around the world. Salve has just over 2,000 undergraduate students, and we have a little over 60 majors, but there's not a lot of pressure to know what you want to study right away. Um, our only direct admit program is nursing, um, and it's a fabulous opportunity to, um, you know, come to Salve, start taking those nursing courses on day one, have guaranteed clinicals, so you will finish on time in four years. Um, but then, 
in addition to nursing, we have so many other majors. Um, business is our most popular area of studies, and there are, are a lot of concentrations. Um, also, criminal justice is pretty popular, psychology, uh, social work, um, biology, and chemistry. We also have some unique majors. So we have a Bachelor of Arts in Dance, um, and that's always been our most popular club. So we're very uh, happy to turn that into a major. Um, I would say our most unique major is cultural and historic preservation, where students take courses in archaeology, they study the built environment, they study architecture and uh, the design of neighborhoods and, and specifically historic districts, and they learn how to preserve those buildings, objects, and neighborhoods. Um, it makes sense that we have such an emphasis on history and preservation because we're located in one of the best kept historic districts in New England. Um, so we are in the Bellevue Avenue Historic District of Newport, Rhode Island. Um, our campus is surrounded by these mansions from the 1800s and in fact, half of our buildings are those historic buildings. So if you're watching the show, uh, The Gilded Era on HBO, you've seen the architecture of our area. Um, and so we have an open campus. We're completely connected to the city and the, and the world around us, um, which is very much part of that Mercy mission, right? To be connected to the, to the neighborhood, to not have a gated off or closed campus. Um, and so our students always have their home base on campus, um, but they feel very comfortable getting off campus, getting into the town and exploring what's around them and kind of broadening their horizon. Horizons. Um, another way that students broaden their horizons is by going abroad, and about one third of our student body will study abroad um, before they graduate. But on campus, there are so many things to do. We have 20 Division III varsity sports. Um, we're in the sailing capital of the world, so that's very popular. Um, we also have pretty competitive club sports, um, such as rugby. They've won several national championships, um, club swim and equestrian. We have over 60 student-led organizations. Um, and in recent years, we've added some affinity groups, like our female empowerment organization and the Black Student Union. Uh, we have the Pell Center for International Relations and Public Policy which is a think tank on campus um, and students that are interested in political science or global studies are able to intern through the Pell Center and we bring in speakers from all over the world to our campus. Um, there's always events going on like carnivals and festivals and of course all of our students participate in community service and that's a big part of the South Bay experience um, giving back to over 70 organizations right in our area. Most students at Salve, um, in terms of admissions, fall between a B plus and an A minus GPA. We are completely test optional, um, so we, we really mean that. Um, we're on the common application, so it's very simple to apply. Um, students can apply in November of senior year. Um, or, uh, please know that nursing majors do need to apply by November 1. Um, and then uh, everyone else can, can decide if they would like to apply November 1 or January 5 or February 1. Um, most of our students, uh, nearly all, receive some form of financial aid. It can be a combination of things. Um, but new this year, you know, we really want to increase um, our racial and ethnic diversity on campus. And so we have scholarships uh, that provide uh, very you know, high amounts of money to students that identify as students of color or Latinx um, with the option to cover up to full tuition um, for students that have the highest need from those groups. Um, so we're hoping that that's going to um, just, just increase that diversity on campus. There's a number of ways to check us out, um, but I encourage you to see salve.edu slash visit uh, to learn about our summer tours. Uh, today was our open house, but we will have those coming up again in the fall. We also have a number of virtual programs um, to help you with the college going process. Um, and you can scan that QR code to find who your admissions counselor is. We, we break it up by where you go to school or if you're homeschooled, where you live. Um, but we would love to schedule a meeting with you. You can do it right there from that website. Um, we take a very personal, um, you know, kind of stance on our admissions process, and we'd love to put a face to the name with our applicants. Um, but thank you so much for listening to me today, and I will turn it over to our next speaker. Awesome. Thank you so much. Loyola University, Maryland is next. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. My name is Nathaniel Brickhouse. Uh, I'm the Assistant Director for Regional Recruitment here at Loyola, Maryland. Uh, what I really like about Loyola is we are in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. We are technically within city limits, but it is a really self-contained campus that's about 10 or 15 minutes north of that downtown Inner Harbor area you see in the center picture. So you have uh, a smaller liberal arts campus. As you can see, it's very uh, green and verdant, and we're actually nicknamed the Evergreen Campus. Um, so you live on that campus, but you have access to a larger metropolitan area 
um, which isn't always the case with smaller liberal arts schools like us. So I like that you get the best of both worlds, uh, having the, the campus experience, but also having access to a bigger city. Uh, and what I really like about Loyola is it's a very individual education. Class sizes are small and all classes are taught by professors. So you get a very individual uh, overall experience, but we're a large enough university to still offer uh, a lot of the things that folks ask about um, and a lot of the academic programs that no doubt you're interested in. Uh, and here's the statistics to back up that balance. Um, we have just under 4,000 total undergrads, which again, for me is that Goldilocks, not too big, not too small. While average class size is still small at just 20, student to faculty ratio is 12 to one, but I always um, prefer average class size. That's something that you'll deal with uh, on a more day-to-day -day basis. Like I mentioned, we are D1 when it comes to sports. Uh, we of course have club and intramural sports as well. Um, and this is my favorite statistic, I think. 82% of students live on campus for all four years. So you're only required to live on campus your first year. So I think the fact that the vast majority of our students choose to live on campus all four years is a really positive reflection on the type of community that we have here at Loyola. So if community is one of those things that is a must have on your college checklist, definitely check us out. Um, it is a very warm and welcoming community. Uh, the students that we tend to attract are much more collaborative uh, rather than competitive. And the physical amenities, the dorm buildings themselves, are quite nice. Uh, the Princeton Review has rated them in the top 20 um, for over a decade now. So um, there are apartment style and dorm style uh, housing options available your first year. Um, so if you're looking uh, for a, a campus, but you might not want to be out in the middle of nowhere, and you definitely want to live on campus for all four years, um, definitely check us out. Study abroad is also very popular. Um, it might be the only time that you're living off campus during your four years with us. Um, about two thirds of our students uh, study abroad. It's usually between uh, 62 to 65%. So if um, you have itchy feet and you, you like to travel and you wanna study abroad, uh, we could also be a good option for that too. Uh, we are a liberal arts school, which means for us, you don't declare a major until your second year. So you, you don't need to apply specifically to a major or a school within the university. Um, you just apply to Loyola, and then you'll have access to all of our academic programs. And we do offer 39 majors and more than 45 minors. We have the, the most popular ones being um, pre-health and pre-med, pre-law as well, political science, communication, psychology, forensic studies is growing in popularity. Um, we have speech, language, and hearing sciences. And we also have engineering, uh, which is not always the case with a small liberal arts school like us. And then of course, uh, we have a business school, which is very popular. And then we also have a school of education. There are a lot of different ways to visit and we definitely recommend that you do visit if you're interested in us, um, come see the campus that you would be living on uh, for four years. And that's a shot of our quad uh, there in the background. If you can't make it to campus though, there are a lot of virtual options as well. The only way to apply uh, to Loyola, Maryland is through the Common App. Um, there's no additional uh, essays or short answer questions, just the Common App essay. And there's also no additional requirements for merit-based scholarships. Um, you're automatically considered for those once you apply. They do range, uh, in my opinion, fairly high, um, from $21,000 per year to all the way up to $35,000 per year. And that's just the merit side. Uh, that does not include um, the need-based uh, financial aid portion. And all that you need to do to apply for need-based aid is submit the FAFSA, that federal um, free form. You can see some um, averages uh, for uh, last year's class. We don't have any minimum GPAs. Uh, we use a much more holistic review process. So no minimum uh, GPAs and no um, minimum test scores. I didn't mention this yet. We're test optional. and We've been that way for over a decade. The only ways to apply are early action, non-binding, and regular decision. Early action deadline is November 15th. Uh, regular decision deadline is January 15th. And both of these are looked upon the same with us and both have the same uh, admittance rates. Definitely uh, recommend applying early if you can, just because you get your decision uh, a little earlier. This is my information. Uh, and I'll just leave you by saying um, the biggest uh, 
philosophical kind of uh, linchpin in the Loyola education is the idea of pura personalis or care for the whole person. Um, so if you're, you're looking for a place where you wanna have a sense of community, you want to know the professors and your peers, and you want to feel supported, uh, definitely check us out. I'd love to uh, connect. Thanks. Thank you. All right, and now we have Santa Clara University. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. I am gonna go ahead and share my screen here really quickly. And here we go. So Santa Clara University, uh, get on a plane. We're heading over to the other side of the coast. Santa Clara is the oldest university in the state of California. We've been around since 1851. Uh, we are part of the Jesuit system. There's 27 universities, just like Loyola, who just presented, who are all about this aspect of not just simply walking through the motions of getting an education, but also understanding like, what is it that makes it unique that you're gonna do? How are you going to pay it forward to others that may need your support? Now, what makes us unique is that we're located right in the heart of Silicon Valley, um, right next to the city of San Jose, Oakland, San Francisco, Monterey, all these beautiful attractions around the world that people come to visit, but this will be your home for four years. Also, it's where every major company in the world is located. Google, Yahoo, Lockheed, eBay, NASA, Shiyan, KBY, Price, Waterhouse, Deloitte, Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Tesla, Electronic Arts, NVIDIA, you name it, it's all here. I have more job offers, more internship offers than actually current students on this campus. And as you see on the screen, about 50% of the students are from in-state, 50% are from out-of-state. So there's a really global experience while coming to study at this university. Now, as I mentioned earlier, our Jesuit philosophy is all about educating the mind, the body, and the spirit. So giving you the opportunity to reflect at your age, you know, what is it that we're looking for? How do we play into this whole system of life? Um, but do you have to be religious to study here? No, you just have to understand and accept the philosophy of making sure that it's not just about you, but it's about exploring and how you give back to those around you. So immersion trips, studying abroad, all those community-based program learning, those are big attractions here at Santa Clara. So you will hopefully gain what we call conscious competence and compassion while you leave Santa Clara University. Now I always tell students embrace the diversity of the world and that's what you will get here at Santa Clara. Right now, about 5,500 undergraduates at Santa Clara, about 3,000 grads. So we're a medium-sized university, not a small one. 11 to 1 student faculty ratios, 23 to 24 students on average per class. Almost most of you will graduate on time, 90% of you. The ones that hold me back, my business and my engineers. And that's because you all get the option to do what's called a four plus one opportunity. So in five years, you guys can wrap up a master's and a bachelor's degree. So it makes really good sense for you guys to, again, not have me grading over 90% there. <clears throat> What's nice, though, is at Santa Clara, 100% of the time, you're only taught by faculty here. You're never going to have a grad student teaching you at this university. So making sure that you do come, you do perform, or as you see there, our classrooms aren't big. We don't have huge lecture halls. That's a benefit to you. You will get to be known by the faculty member, but also a um, hindrance to you is that if you don't show up to class, they're going to know. <clears throat> You, we also were founded as a liberal arts institution. So I always tell my students, even though I'm in Silicon Valley, make sure you're tapping into your left brain and right brain development to sharpen up those skills in whatever it is you want to do. Whether it be the research, whether it be the business, whether it be that you want to be in theater dance, like those are some of the big programs at Santa Clara University. I am also 20 division one sports at Santa Clara, 19 club sports and over 150 clubs and organizations. So I always need to make sure that I have students who are willing to come in here challenge my faculty, challenge my staff, do the best research and not willing to settle, but at the same time, go paint your face and get on ESPN every once in a while. Now your housing, every student here will be asked to house at Santa Clara for the next two years. And then third year, I don't make it a requirement because most of you wanna be abroad. Fourth year is an option because some of you don't wanna be with the first years anymore. So I do have upperclassmen housing for you. Housing here can be everything from the traditional two beds, two desks, community bathroom down the hall, to suite style, where you get your own bedroom, you share a living room, you share a kitchen. The nice thing though at Santa Clara is that every single room will have a sink inside its bedroom. So you don't have to go down the hall to brush your teeth if you don't want to. The other nice thing is food. We are located in the Bay Area. So that is a big tradition for us. So I always tell students, you gotta stay involved because your libritas, your kilos, they're gonna come on really, really quick here at Santa Clara if you don't get involved. 
Plus, it is the Bay Area. It is the most diverse place on the planet you will ever get to live in and experience for the next four years. Every culture, every language, and obviously all the food you can taste 24-7 while being here at Santa Clara. Whether it be that you want to be in the Redwood Forest by yourself, in a major city like San Francisco, or just chilling in your bedroom, you can do all that here at Santa Clara. We're only on the comment app, and when you submit, you tell me where you want to begin your academic adventure. Is it arts and science? Is it business? Or is it engineering? I bring in 60% of the class in arts and science, only 25% of you in the business, and only 15% of you in engineering. Business is in the top 25 programs in the country. Engineering is in the top 10 in the country. Arts and science schools don't get ranked, but it's the foundation for both, so extremely, extremely strong. This is the way that I will break down your application. So please take a picture of this screen. We are test optional. We will give you guys all the opportunities, but I need you to overall demonstrate to me that you are the whole package at Santa Clara, not just numbers, okay? Your deadlines will be coming up November 1st for early action, early decision, and January 7th for early decision two and regular decision. And as my colleagues have already mentioned, if you have the opportunity, please come out and visit us. If not, you can also do it virtually. We do that Monday through Saturday. So. If you have other questions, feel free to connect with us. Uh, here are all the different platforms. You can always email me, call me, if there's anything else that we can help you with. But overall, hopefully you guys enjoy the college search process. I'll turn it back over to our facilitator. Thank you so much. Alrighty, so I'd like to welcome everybody back on screen at this point so we can hear from you all one more time. All right, so my first question here for you is, what um, what advice do you have for students who are going through the search process now or sometime in the near future? And we'll jump back up to Mount Mercy first. Advice for anyone is that you don't have to have it all figured out right now. You've got time and you've got lots of resources here. You've got four of them from different colleges and Chelsea here from StripeScan who can all help with questions. Um, just don't put so much pressure on yourself that you have to have it all figured out right now because you, I promise you don't and it, it's all gonna work out. Awesome, thank you. Sally or Dina, what is your advice? Sure. I'll just give like a, a practical tip because I, I know sometimes it can get hard to remember, you know, which, which college had that great athletics facility or which college had that amazing um, engineering building or that kind of thing. So um, I suggest uh, having a, a spreadsheet, maybe something like a Google sheet um, where it can be online and you can have one big spreadsheet when you're kind of younger in the process and just kind of have the names of the university, maybe the locations and basic notes, just some ways to kind of remember some differences about them. And then as you get into your senior year and you're starting to build your college list, you can make a new tab and then that can have a lot of a lot more details, but just a way to kind of keep yourself organized with the process. You can share that sheet with family or your counselor or other folks that are helping you with the process um, and just kind of keep your keep your ducks in a row. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Loyola University, Maryland, what is your advice? Yeah, mine uh, sort of echoes what I, I mentioned in my presentation. Um, definitely think about what kind of classroom environment you'd like and then what kind of campus living environment that you'd like. Um, at least when I was doing my college search, I focused a lot on um, just kind of bigger um, statistics almost um, and, and really didn't think, okay, what is my day-to-day -day going to look like at this school versus that school? Um, so definitely think about what your day-to-day your -day life at college is going to be like. Thank you. And Santa Clara University. I'll say, um, keep in mind that you're the one that's gonna be applying to the university. So listen to yourself. Um, I know that we always try to get advice from many other people but uh, find the right place for you. Um, I know they always say, try to find the perfect place. There is no perfect place out there. Uh, just find what you really are going to find the place that you're gonna blossom in. And then understand that this is not the opportunity or the time to be humble in your applications. You're competing against thousands of other applicants to get that seat. So tell us who you really, really are and don't be shy about letting us know the things that you can brag about. Thank you. All right, my next question is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? If there's one thing they could take away, what would that be? We'll go back up to Mount Mercy. Well, with this group, it would be that we are not on the coast. We're right in the middle. I'm just teasing you guys, but <laughs> I'm jealous of all the pictures. But no, for us, it's, we are right in the heart of Iowa, right? And it's very much what you find here is Iowa nice. And no matter where you go on campus, who you talk to, 
you're going to walk away with people saying, how can I help you? What, what, what do you need? Do you need to get somewhere? You're going to find that a lot here on our campus, just like you would elsewhere. But, you know, that's one thing that we tend to find in all of our surveys that people come visit is that people are very open and welcoming and just want to help. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Salve Regina, what is yours? Yeah, I would say for us, you know, I, I think um, there's such a wide range of uh, selectivity rates out there. And, um, you know, I, I think sometimes students really stress about, am I going to get in? Am I, am I not going to get in? Um, just know that if you have a well-balanced list, you will find colleges that are for you. And I would say for Salve, we do admit a pretty wide range of students. A quarter of our students are close to a 4.0. Um, most fall between a 3.2 and a 3.7, but then we can take a chance sometimes on students that are a little bit below that 3.2. Um, we're test optional. And so I think if you're that kind of student that um, has a lot of potential, but maybe you hit it a little bit later in high school, but you're showing evidence of that. You're, you're having, um, you know, a rise in grades in junior and senior year. Um, great recommendation letters from your counselors. Um, give us a shot because you, you might be able to get in. Um, and those are the students that, that I remember the most when they apply to Salve and, and that their life is kind of changed the most by the experience. So that, that's kind of my favorite sort of student that we admit. Awesome. Thank you. Loyola University, Maryland. Yeah, um, the one thing I would want you to remember about Loyola is that there are small classes with big opportunities and the supportive community and professors behind you to get whatever you want to do done. Thank you. And Santa Clara. I'd say for us, um, <clears throat> opportunity and innovation. I mean, we're in Silicon Valley, so I'm looking for students who want to think outside the bubble and do as much as you can. I mean, most students here will double major, double minor, study abroad and finish in four years. So I don't want you to settle. Awesome, thank you for that. And my final question is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process and Mount Mercy University Europe? I think I had to go with uh, the previous comment of finding that perfect fit because there really isn't a perfect fit. Uh, Everybody gets their, their opportunities to talk with others about the experiences, but remember it's your experience. You know, I always tell students when they say, why, why should I go to Mount Mercy? It's like, well, the reasons I would attend are different from the reasons that you should attend, but you really have to think about those institutions from your own perspective and that there's no one right place that you're gonna walk away from and go, oh my gosh, this is the one place you're going to find that at multiple locations for multiple reasons. And you just have to figure out which one is the best opportunity for you where you will truly thrive. But again, it will all figure itself out and you don't have to have it figured out today. Awesome. Thank you. Salve Virginia University. I think one myth is that, uh, you know, in-state institutions or public institutions are always going to be more affordable for your family than a private institution. Um, and while that can be true much of the time, many of us offer scholarships and financial aid. Um, and there are students that, that we've admitted um, where sometimes we're actually a better deal. Uh, than, than, they, than they would have expected. Um, so we really work hard to get those costs down. And um, one thing that everyone can do right now is go on Google, type in net price calculator. You can look up the names of institutions that you're interested in, such as all the ones that are on this call um, and plug in some numbers and get a sense of, you know, what would the average cost be to go to this college? Um, it won't be accurate down to the cent because you have to go through the financial aid process, um, but it'll give you an idea of, you know, are, are we in the ballpark for you? Thank you. Loyola University? Uh, yeah, mine is test optional, and I don't think I need to fight quite as hard as I had to in the past now that it's becoming uh, more common, but when a school says that they are test optional, um, they really do mean it. Um, it's not, yeah, you don't have to submit your scores, and we're going to look badly on you if you choose not to. Not at all. Um, we really are test optional. Um, some other schools will be test blind, and that will be different. Um, test optional just means that you're welcome to submit your scores. Um, you're not required to. And if you ever have that question, oh, should I submit or should I not? Definitely just look up the, the average ranges or reach out to your admissions counselor. Thank you. And Santa Clara University. And I echo um, all the responses from my colleagues here on the screen. Um, they all wonderful advice. I would say another big myth um, is that college is probably going to, you know, it's going to be hard and it's going to be long. Uh, you'd be surprised at how fast time flies when you're, when you're at the university. You're going to come in your first year and things are going to get a little rocky, but 
but then sophomore year comes around then junior year all of a sudden is here and then before you know it it's senior year and you're ready to fly so this is why we say like spend the time to really find those opportunities and be open-minded you know even though you might not find that school on the coast that you were looking for you might find a gem like mount mercy in the middle of the country right so you want to go find and keep an open mind about these options and opportunities that each and every one of you will have so awesome thank you great way to end our session so um i am going to wrap things up for us this uh, afternoon so a huge thank you to our presenters for putting this information together and and working through things with us here and to our uh, participants for joining us this afternoon when you close this window there will be a link to a very quick five question survey we really appreciate any feedback you can provide uh feel free to check back the schedule find more sessions uh, if you missed any or wanted to watch it again you'll be able to find all the sessions recordings at strivescan.com nccaa and that's it for us. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.